everyone, Ace of Clay here. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another sculpting video and happy Friday. I have no idea how it's already Friday. This week just completely flew by. And to be honest with you, I don't even remember making this sculpture. But anyway, I guess I made a gargoyle and I'm about to show you how I did it. So if you can't tell, I'm trying to get back into my subscriber request videos. You guys are asking for me to make some really cool stuff and I just wanna go back into that list and check off the really big ones. And if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. And without further ado, let's make a gargoyle. All right, first step, armature. I'm just gonna shape out the gargoyle's legs and torso from this aluminum wire. And I wanna make them in this like sort of traditional squatting pose. And as always, all of the materials that I use in this video are listed in the description box below, along with my affiliate links if you want to purchase anything. And now I'm attaching the arms as a separate piece of wire with some floral wire. And now we're going to bulk out that torso with some aluminum foil. Then once the foil is on, we're going to cover everything in some Sculpey Ultralight. Nothing like opening a new package of this stuff. Using ultralight gives me a nice solid surface to add my final layer of clay so I'm not rearranging the foil and the wire while I'm sculpting. Then I'm just going to poke some holes and add some wire for the future wings. And then a bamboo skewer for the neck. And then I'm just making sure everything is nice and secure and it's ready to bake. Then once it's baked and completely cooled down, it's time to cover everything in Super Sculpey Original. And once I've got my base layer of Sculpey down, I'm just going to start defining the muscles of the legs a little bit. So we just added that snake of clay to bring out the calf a little bit more. And we can't forget about this area that we're doing G.I. Joe style for now, before we add his little loincloth later on. Now I'm going to add the pectoral muscles and Please keep in mind that this is not a tutorial on how to sculpt the male figure. I by no means am doing this correctly. I'm just trying to make a gargoyle and get the point across for that and make it sort of stylized so that it matches with my existing style and all the other monsters that I've already made. So if you're looking for a male anatomy tutorial, please look elsewhere. And he's looking a little too jacked, so we're just going to trim those pecs down a little bit and then get back to refining everything. Now we're going to jump down to the feet really quick. These are the first set of toes that I put on and I don't like them. So we're going to go ahead and do my tried and true method Add these little balls of clay and then use Primo for the claws. Now I'm just going to bring out that quadricep a little bit on both legs, of course. Now for some reason we're going to jump back down to the toes, we're going to add those claws to them. And like I said, I'm using some Primo just because it's stronger and these are a fragile shape. Now to heighten the detail on the feet, I'm just going to go ahead and add some snakes of clay to create some tendons. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some knuckles. This really makes a huge difference on the feet. I guess you could say it's super easy and super effective. Then after finishing the details on the other foot off camera, I'm just going to go in with my explorer tool to refine things and add a couple wrinkles. Now I'm going to press in some ribs with my firm detail tool. Now I'm going to go in with my medium ball stylus to detail the upper torso area and get that all done. And then with my firm detail tool again, we're going to go ahead and detail the abdomen.
and now I'm just going to remove the clay from the back just because I want to pre-bake this and make the back after the front is hardened so I don't smash it. And then for the last detail of course I'm going to go in with the toothbrush and this other brush to create a nice stone texture. And then I'm going to follow this step by using my explorer tool to make some cracks. And it's ready for another bake. And once it's baked and completely cooled down, it's time to put the clay back on his back. Now once all that clay is back on the back, I'm just going to use this nice snake of clay to create some little vertebrae sticking out. Now the next step is the wings. So since I already have that armature wire attached to him, I'm just cutting out the wings that I traced onto this sheet of clay, texturing it a little bit, adding these pieces here. I believe these are called the fingers on a dragon's wings. I don't know if it's the same thing for a gargoyle, but we'll go with that. And the last time I made wings this big, it was for my giraffe to dragon thrift store transformation. So it's been a while, I'm a little rusty. But they turn out okay. I'm just a little impatient when it comes to things that I don't enjoy making. I just want to get them over with. So if I would have spent a little more time on the wings, they probably would have turned out better. But like I said, they look fine. And after completing the second wing off camera, I'm using my explorer tool to create some cracks and then we're finishing up that texture with a toothbrush again. Let's bake it again. And once it's baked and completely cooled down, let's do the arms. Just adding the clay to the wire like so and then just shaping them out. And once the base shape of the arm is on, we're just going to bring out that deltoid a little bit. And add some more muscle definition down here. And once that second arm is done and looking pretty good, we're going to give him some clothes really quick. Nice little loincloth. And now for the hands. I left all the footage in so you can see exactly what I'm doing. These are going to be fists that will be touching the ground in front of him if you can't tell from how I have it positioned. Then to further detail the hands, we're just going to add some knuckles. These make a huge difference. Once everything is shaped out and looking pretty good, we're going to texture it all and then add some cracks. And it's time for the head. I'm just making the core of the head with some aluminum foil, covering it with more clay. And then I stuck a bamboo skewer in for the neck. Using a large ball stylus, I'm pressing out the eye sockets. Then a medium ball stylus to shape things out a little bit more. Then I'm going to add the eyeballs as tiny little balls of clay right into the eye sockets there. Sort of pushing them down a little bit. And then I'm using this tool to press out the shape of the eye. And I'm creating the upper and lower eyelids simultaneously when I do this. Mm -hmm. 
And now it's time for some exaggerated angry brows. Just adding this tapered snake of clay above the eye and blending it in with everything else. And let's repeat this step on the other side. Now for the nose, I just added this shape, and then I'm blending it in with my spoon tool, and I want him to look like it's sort of scrunched up and he's kind of growling, so that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Now I'm just gonna add a tiny snake of clay to bring out the cheekbone a little bit more, make him look a little more gaunt. Now we're going to bring out that jawbone a little bit with some more clay. And I want to give him a really big underbite. I haven't done an underbite in a while, so this will be fun. We're going to add some really big canines and then, of course, the smaller teeth in between them. And then finish it off with a nice, grumpy looking lower lip. Now it's time for the ears that I will be making out of this flattened teardrop shape. After finishing the other ear off camera, I'm going to attach the head. Normally I pre-bake the head before I add it to the body, but I didn't really think it was necessary this time. Then I'm going to add the neck and bake this one last time, and now it's time for paint. All of the paints that I use in this video are Folk Art brand matte acrylics. And the first step, I'm going to paint the entire thing pure black. This will give a nice contrast when I add the gray dry brushing to create that stone look. Now it's time for the first layer of gray dry brushing. This is a very dark gray, and I just want to dry brush it lightly on the surface to bring out all of that texture detail that I put on there. I absolutely love dry brushing and I, you probably know this from all of my other videos because I use it on pretty much every sculpture, but I just love it so much because it's like the sculpture is essentially painting itself. If your texture, if your surface looks good, your dry brushing is going to look good. And as you can see here, in between each layer drying, I'm just lightening that gray more and more until I get it to a point that I like. I don't want to get it too light because then it'll start not looking good. Now I'm just going to dry brush some grass green mixed with brown and yellow light to create this sort of mossy color and just put it on all the areas where the sun would hit. And for the last step I'm taking some imperial red and painting his eyes. And he's done! The gargoyle is complete! Let me know what you think in the comments, and then if you use any of the tips and techniques in this video on your own projects, share them to Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, and tag me at Ace of Clay, or hashtag Ace of Clay so I can check them out. And be sure to like and subscribe.
And that's a wrap. I really hope you like the gargoyle. I think he came out pretty cool. And to be honest with you, I think he came out a lot better than I was expecting him to. Are his proportions perfect? No, they're not. But I still think he looks cool. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And then follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at Ace of Clay. And check me out on TikTok. And I will see you in the next video.